And my wife, I mean, it was right after I got through singing, my wife took me to uh, the Settlement Music School in Philly and enrolled me in the school like she was taking me to kindergarten. <laughs> she set it up, took me in there. I had a meeting with uh, the lady in the school. And she said, uh, well, what qualifications do you have? Because I was an adult. I was 50 years old. <laughs> she said, why do you want to come to school and learn music at this time? And I said, well, I always wanted to be a musician. I always wanted to learn to play an instrument. And, uh, and I was a singer. And she said, uh, well, after she was said that she had a picture in the back of her office. And she said, well, what quali qualifications do you have? I said, I sang there. And she said, what? I said, yeah, I sang there. It was a picture of Carnegie Hall. Wow. And when I said, she said, you sang at Carnegie Hall? <laughs> she said, come on in. Yeah, the door <laughs> Not a bad endorsement, huh? Right. Wow. So, okay, so you went to school, and, and if I re recall correctly, you did, you were, you had like a three-year, I don't know if you call it sabbatical, because you were still yeah. working on your vocals and... Well, Kenny was the band director of the original band, too, that was with the original stylistic. And uh, they were dismissed at the same time I left. Oh, my. Uh, and I would be out jogging. I'd be running around getting in shape and going to school. And Kenny would ride past or Raymond would come past and say, you ready to put the band together yet? <laughs> I said, no, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> well, wait a minute. You don't got to be ready. Let me just start on <laughs> And so it would go on for like a couple of years. Yeah, wow. Come back to the house and sit down for a while and say, you ready to put the band together yet? <laughs> and so it went on, and I stayed in school for, for three years. I went back to high school, and uh, I, I just tried to rebuild my life. But I was happy. I mean, I was real, real happy. And then when I finally told the two of them, I said, I'm ready. We didn't have to do anything. Everybody came. Wow. The musicians, the singers, Jonathan came. I mean, and we just, it was like magic. Nobody had to say anything or go hire somebody. Just a couple of, a few members, we would go out and look for, look for them and bring them to the band. But everything fit into place. And it was an organization that right now I'm very proud of. Very proud to work with. They're good people. Not just musicians, but good people. So what was the moment that you came to that let you know, okay, you're ready? I was sitting, I was in the um, music room with my music teacher, and it was Christmas time, and I brought the mu music for White Christmas in there for him to, you know, teach me how to play it. And while he was playing it, I started to sing. And he hadn't heard me sing. And when I started to sing, he went off. He just <laughs> jumped up and looked at me. And that's when I knew that it was time, that I could do it. He didn't it. know who you were. No, he didn't matter. He was, you know, he, he, was, he was a classical guy. You know, he didn't come from the R&B world. Or he knew nothing about that, you know. Now, Russell, I want to put you on the spot and oh, ask Lord. you what, <laughs> uh, what you did, how, how you did White Christmas, Christmas that, you know, I won't put you on the spot and do that to you, Russell. Because I would, I would never want to share with the rest of the audience. It's much too hot to do Christmas. Yeah. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the one I used to know Where the treetops glisten And children listen To hear sleigh bells in the snow Woohoo! And on that note, we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back.